Hello, YouTubers. Joe Kersey here on uh, Christmas Eve 2016 at a uh, little after 1800 in the evening Eastern Time. Um, I'm going to read you a set piece here in a few minutes or a minute or two, depending. Uh, now, normally, in two hours' time, I'd be leaving here and going up to church for the 9 o'clock service uh, tonight. But uh, I just... I just can't bring myself to do it uh, for some reasons that will be better stated in this piece I read you that I wrote. It's on my website, joeskersey.com, so you can you can read it there. Um, so basically, today I. I listened to the King's College uh, Chapel carol service. Uh, the modern carols that they have in the center of the service weren't as obnoxious as they have been in years past. And it hit, it hit me that about the last three years, I've not listened to the entire service because I just got so fed up with these, this music that they were playing in between the readings. Well, I stuck to it this time. And, of course, I'd forgotten uh, some of the standard order of service uh, that they always ended with, uh, uh, Oh, come all ye faithful. Uh, of course, they always come in on uh, Once in Royal David City, or they, they started doing that about three years after they instituted the service. Um, uh, I felt really chagrined and somewhat bad for this guy from uh, the, the actual city of Cambridge who read uh, one of the Isaiah readings. Uh, and uh, it was clear that, one, he was reading way too fast, you know. And it's if, if you try to read the authorized version, the King James Version, way too fast, you're going to have problems. Uh, he, he made two mistakes where he had to go back twice. Uh, and you could just tell this guy was as nervous as all get out to be up there in front of these people reading this thing. I also have a couple of doubts as to whether he had really practiced this a lot. But uh, as somebody who was... Uh, Sort of a, you know, close watcher of lectors, uh, out of kind of a quasi-professional interest. Actually, uh, I felt I felt really bad for the guy because you know he's not going to get another shot at this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've been some emailing back and forth with Tony Pincham. Uh, I looked at a little YouTube. Uh, but uh, I just, well, I'll read this to you. You'll, you'll understand. Uh, uh, Henry, fine. I, my good neighbor came over uh, here just moments ago and brought me some... Uh, pork with some gravy on it that Liz had made before she flew out to Los Angeles to be with her daughter and grandkids. And, I, and she, may see, she may see both uh, both daughters. She's got a daughter up in Seattle. So I don't know if they're going to come down or get together. I don't know. The one in Kansas City might fly in too. I don't know. But Liz, is, uh, Liz gets back New Year's Eve, so Henry's going to be on his own. 
He was going to go to Atlanta uh, to see his family, but uh, something happened, and and uh, it went down in in terms of the family that they couldn't. He couldn't do it, and then his son actually came down from Akron, so things are in a flux. Meanwhile, tonight my son and daughter-in-law and grandson are over at uh, Thomas's mother's house. And then, uh, as I may have mentioned yesterday, tomorrow they're going over to Dayton uh, to be with uh, Kelly's sister and her mother and dad. Uh, they may stay Sunday night, they may not. In any case, I hope they have safe, all these people have safe travel. Good Lord. You know, and I just realized most of my sister's extended family, you know, her kids and well, grandkids now, are uh, traveling, zipping around the better part of two thirds of Michigan. Uh, here this weekend. So I hope that goes well. So let's uh, let's read this thing to you. And as I said, you can find it on the joescruzy.com website, web page, website. I don't put so much stuff up there, but occasionally I do. You know, it's worth $18 a year to maintain it. So I wrote this uh, between... 1600 and 1800 this evening and sort of the main title is and the Christmas related funk malaise and uncertainty starts Well, it was only a matter of time it has held off a bit longer than usual this year But eventually I reach a point reached a point Reach a point where I get fed up with all the happy, chirpy, family this and family that, and who are you going to see, and who's coming to see you? Well-intentioned comments and questions. Oh, yes. All well-intentioned and without any hint of a subtext or an innuendo. Seriously, and I say that seriously. It would be very easy to fall into the dead-end trap of entertaining those thoughts. And I've not even directly experienced the above phenomenon this year yet. But you get a moderate amount of that during Thanksgiving, too. But if I go to church this Christmas Eve for the 2100 service, the 9 o'clock in the evening service, it will start, and a good stiff dose of it, too. Now, obviously, I'm going to church tomorrow on the 25th at 9. I'm not reading, but I'm going. It's Sunday, after all. I'll get some of it there then, too. But it's usually easier to dodge and deflect these well-meaning comments and questions at a morning service, which will historically, on, a, on Christmas Day, be much smaller. Changing the subject's a good tactic. Actually, engaging them in medical discussions is another good tact of their problems. Everybody likes to talk about their medical problems to a retired doc. As far as I know, and that's one of the major annoyances this time around, and that's sort of what really prompted this, I'm not reading tonight. One would think that I'd have heard one way or the other. I volunteered for the 9 o'clock service tonight back on December 1st when the schedule came out with unassigned open slots. And I was told I'd hear back one way or the other. Nope. No word. Not a peep. Zippo. So I don't feel too bad about not going up there tonight and having to listen to all the extraneous stuff. And it will be there for sure, interspersed with the actual stuff about Christ's incarnation. The extraneous stuff about where are we going as a parish and letting the process 
take its course. And discernment. And retreats for the discernment process. A double score there with that phrase. I realize it is not about me, but I feel that I am being gradually squeezed out of the reading rota after almost 12 years of being continually available to fill in on almost all occasions. But it's been clear for some time that this fellow's mandate is to stir up and shake things up out of familiar patterns that have, for the most part, been working very well for all concerned. And that includes the congregation, obviously, which is what your target audience includes the congregation who seemed quite happy with the reading situation we had before he arrived and stated as much to me many times. But as I said, this is a bad time of year for me for various reasons and always has been. Not just me, I think a lot of people have the same response. Strangely, this is one of the better years. Most years I'm an almost immobile, depressive funk. In an almost immobile, depressive funk. I have good neighbors, one of whom just brought over some fine pork and gravy. I have a fine son, grandson, and daughter-in-law that I will, if the plans hold up, see at least once during this vacation break. But the sense that I'm being excluded from the active role I've had in church for many years is disheartening. It might not be the case, but I've read, hand I've read handwriting on walls in other situations. I adjusted, of course, but not readily and not without some resentment. Nothing I can really do except keep soldiering on in the bits they let me do, which I'm always happy to do if I can, and I usually can. But I do not wish to subject myself to that tonight. No, not tonight. Not this time. I'm trusting that God understands. Obviously, he does. Uh, I would not be in a proper frame of mind to worship him if I were to go. This puts me in the, remind, reminds me of a phrase out of Psalm 137. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall I sing the Lord's song in a strange land? So bye-bye, YouTubers, and have a happy Christmas tomorrow. Bye-bye.